I, Stephanie Bain, Stephanie Bain, I have a books, 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 I, I, I'm a book addict. There's so many books. Hey everyone, today's video is, as you can tell, not the same quality it normally is, which is not even that great to begin with. But um, I am just using my webcam today because I've attempted to film this video so many times, but it's actually really difficult for me to kind of like put into words how I rate my books. I don't know why I'm having such difficulty with this. I'm just going to kind of go through it. I have four points to make. Let's take these back out. And these may or may not be how other people like, you know, rate their books as well. But this is how I rate my books. At least these are the things that really I consider when rating my books. Now let me just first start off with I rate my books three stars and up because I will not read a book I don't like. If I don't like a book I'm not going to continue reading it and if I do finish it maybe once in a blue moon you're going to see me rate a book a one or a two star because I did finish reading it because I wanted to power through it and see if maybe somewhere along the way it kind of changed but that is usually not the case. I think the only one I've actually talked about that I physically like read the entire thing and I rated it was Delirium. I had originally given it three stars, but the more I thought about it, I changed my rating and I gave that book a two stars. And you're going to kind of see why, because I talked about this when I did my wrap up for that video. It starts off from a three star and on, just letting you know that. It's not because I love every book and I want to just talk about great books. It's not that, and I'm not someone who likes everything just because everyone else likes it. I'm very honest in my reviews, but I don't like... If I don't finish the book, how can I rate it? That's like, that's a bunch of crap, I think, because I didn't actually finish the book. So let's just talk about the first thing I consider, and it starts where three stars is, and that is how I feel. Am I feeling anything in the book? Am I getting emotions from it? The feels, as they say. If I don't feel for the characters, if I don't feel like I'm with them or I am them, and I don't, I can't put myself in that like scenario then it's not a good start, at least, because, I mean, that's a big thing for writing when someone's writing a book. I feel like, you know, I read books for an escape, for adventure, for fun, you know, when there's nothing else on TV. I just, I love being captured by it. The second thing is how it was written. Of course, how it's written really does matter. Um, and I don't say how it is written by meaning, you know, the person has to use, you know, large words or they have to, you know, use all these metaphors and it doesn't have to be a wash of words coming over me. The writing style, not necessarily what the writing is important, but I feel like I'm lenient towards it and it's, you know, if I felt it and it was written really good for what the type of story they're trying to tell then yeah, four stars. If they don't have the other two things, that's a four star for me. Because another thing is, is some books need to be a lot more simpler in details than in others. Harry Potter is elaborate and unique and very detailed down to the freaking drain drop, you know? And I love that about it, but it suits it so well. It really gets you into the world. And then there's other books that I've read that you don't need to be that descriptive because it's kind of leaving you room to imagine for yourself. And I enjoy that in books. Um, the third thing is cliches, predictability. You know, no story is original. And I understand that. That's not a problem for me. It's, there is a set of cliches. And it's so funny because a lot of people were talking about it, how in a lot of books, you're going to see where, oh, I was, I let out a breath. I didn't know I was holding. That's a cliche because every book has it. That's something that they always say. It's expected. It's so like, why did you put that in there? But if it works well, it doesn't matter to me. And in Delirium, for example, the cliches were a bit much. I, and the predictability of it. I knew what was going to happen before it happened, before the thing happened, like, Oh, uh, that was kind of frustrating. The fact that it was just so predictable and there was just so many cliches. It felt like, I don't know, I did not connect with that book. And because of that, it made it even worse. Because I actually really like the idea of the book. I like the storyline, where what it's supposed to be, where it's supposed to go. But the writing style and the fact that there was just way too many cliches really bothered me. And it's okay that people use other people's works as influence for inspiration or for whatever it is. 
but you have to make it your own because a lot of people like right now I'm reading Endgame. I'm like a hundred pages in. I'm loving it so far. And when I was reading reviews for it, everyone was saying, oh, it's compared to Hunger Games. It's like a copy Hunger Games, whatever. Yes, I understand why they say that because of the 12 family lines, because of the ages that they play Endgame in and because of that type of thing. But I'm reading it right now. And I don't get the same feel from it. This is very different. The idea of the story, where the story is coming from, is very different. This world isn't controlled and separated like the dystopian setting of, um, what do we call it, Hunger Games. It's not at all. This is very different. You know, the girls are graduating and the meteor comes letting her know, well, guess what? You're the one who's going to play the game. You're the one who's going to save your family and you're going to get everyone out of, not everyone, so, and that's still, I'm still wondering what's going to happen. And it's actually not very predictable there. I love the love interest and they're, I don't know, it's just really good. So just letting you know, you should go read it so far. I mean, of course I haven't finished it, so I can't read it, but um, I'm loving it so far. And the last big thing for me is love, love interest, love triangles and all that stuff. Those things, that for me is a big thing because not all books need love. Not all books need the romantic type of love. I feel like there's not enough books out there about love when it comes to friendship and family. I know there is some. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just saying there's not enough of that out there. There needs to be more of the other types of love. You know, I don't want to know about the girl who can't decide between the hot boy A or hot boy B and then hot boy C that she has on the side nobody knows about. I don't need to know about that. And one book, for example, you're going to see my review in a couple days, but I'll give you like a little snippet of it. And one book that I have that I had an issue with the love, like seriously, because I felt like it was unnecessary. It should not have been there. And it would have been a better story had it not had that. But I felt like it was thrown in there because everybody wants to read about love is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. You're going to see my review about this, so I'm not going to go into too much depth about the whole love, but I felt it was unnecessary, and I think it would have been a much better book if it didn't have that. I really think so. It would have made it that more intriguing as to why Jacob wanted to stay in the loop and go with them and try to save them from the hollow ghast and all that. I think it would have been better. Some books just shouldn't have love. So literally, I know this was like kind of a shortish video, but those are the things that make or break a book for me. That's it. I feel like that's as simple as it is because, you know, I'm never going to read a, start a book that I didn't like and I won't rate those books. So that's why you'll never see a book usually under three stars. You're only going to have rare occurrences of that. But it's just how does the book make me feel? Um, how it is written? Cliches, predictability, how it was written into that. That's like a whole separate thing. It's like writing has two things and love interest. Those are my four rating like things that just really get it down to the nitty gritty and make it make or break it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm sorry for the quality sorry that just kind of went out for a minute and i'll see you in my next video bye